This call is being publicly streamed. Okay, hello there and welcome to the Real English Party Online. We are at the Real English Party Online Tuesday Afternoon Book Club. My name is Justin. Justin, I am your Real English Party host, hosting this book club where we are reading Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Of course, People are free to join. People are free to comment. I am able to see, I believe I'm able to see the comments in real time. So if anyone would like to leave a comment on this live stream, feel free to do so. I should be able to see and perhaps even respond to that comment presently. Okay, that being said, I apologize that when I had sent a link out for this event, I said that we would be starting the chapter we're in, in fact, we have not, we've already started the chapter, I forgot, and we have not finished the chapter. I believe it's chapter 17. So my apologies for that. Actually, we will be in the middle of the chapter that we're reading from. Uh, just a few updates. Um, just so you know, our curry night, our monthly curry night, which was last Friday, was a great success. I think we were able to impress the staff there at Simran Asian Dining, and we had some delicious curry. The party was great. So everyone who attended, thank you for coming. If you continue to look at the event calendar, you will see every month there is a curry night at the same location. Pretty much, I think it's the, maybe I want to say the first Friday of every month though I'm not entirely sure about that. I think it's something like that. And so, of course, if at, at any time you would like to sign up for that, you can just go to the event, scroll down into your information and how you would like to pay, and the information will go to me. And just as it did for this event or that event, we will have you on reservation. You will have a seat at the table just so that you know that particular event, there's so much food that is served. The price is good, but there's, there's so much food that is served that we usually don't get to the kinds of English speaking games that I try to get to. I, I, I usually like to play a game of sort of a Scrabble tile game, or I try to play a little truth, dare, and consequences, or something like that. I try to play maybe crossword games and of. Uh, well, question and answer games. It's all kinds of games that I hope to play uh, at most of my events. But at that particular event, it seems like it would be impossible because they're serving so much food so constantly for the entire two hours that basically we only have time for conversation. Of course, if there ever is a lull in the conversation, then by all means, I have things planned. I have card games to play, lots of things that we can do. So that's never a problem. But so please do come to the curry night. That night is not so much of an English challenge for you unless you think that just eating curry and having English conversation is a challenge. And it could be. Yeah, so I wish you to, for, for you to join us there. That is in Higashi Rinkan, which is where I am located now, very close to my location. So that's why the price is so reasonable. And we have very flexible registration terms for that reason, because I'm basically already here. Uh, also, I believe we are having monthly, monthly now, our Real English Tea Party or Lunch Party is monthly on once a month on Saturday in Ebina at Latte Graphic. Uh, once a month. I believe, I'm not sure about this, I haven't checked my calendar, but I believe it's the, maybe the second Saturday of every month this year we will schedule a real English party at Latte Graphic in Ebina, one of my favorite cafes in Kanagawa. So I've got that as a regular schedule. I want the staff to be prepared to see us every month. But of course, that only happens if people do sign up. So please do sign up for that event. We do want to see you there, but we really can't hold the event unless you let us know that you are coming and then we can let you know of where to be. Okay, so there is that. And also we have our Real English Party Online Friday night dinner party, which will be at Rick's Cafe American. 
uh, Rick's Cafe American is in Machida. And there, that that event also will, we will be having monthly. I believe that is either the first or second Friday of every month, maybe the second Friday of every month. I'm not sure if I can recall. And there it's a little bit more expensive, but uh, we're going to have a much bigger dinner with a sort of all-you-can-drink kind of thing. There's more fun for activities. We can play at my usual table and board games. And then, of course, there's also a pool table there, so we can even spread that on over to the pool table. I've learned how to make certain games, English-speaking games, that can be useful even when playing pool. So I'm happy to bring that and to introduce that. Of course, there's room there to use the Jenga Tower, right? The Jenga Tower is the game where we play, pull out a block, and based on the color of the block, we ask a certain kind of question or do a certain kind of English challenge. And of course, who pulls out the block that drops the Jenga Tower is the person who loses or something like that. Right, actually, I don't think the Jenga tower has ever fallen since I've introduced it to the real English party, believe it or not. So that's not such a problem, is it? And of course, we have our monthly song event. Our monthly song event is in Nagatsuta. That happens every month. We have to change the date depending on the availability at the Nagatsuta Midori Art Park, of the, basically their community hall. We don't always have the same date arranged. We try to arrange it well in advance, but we really can't do it so much. So we kind of have to decide as we go. So uh, for instance, I believe that this, the next song event for March will be in on, I don't know. Oh, okay. So like the next so song event for March, is actually going to be, I believe, in early March. It might be like March 9th or March 16th or something to that event. So, effect. So, that's going to be an early one. But uh, yeah, it, it, it will happen every month. Usually, it's the second or third Saturday of the month. But as availability allows. That's in Nagatsuta. If you can't get there, we understand, but you're missing out because that is probably where. Well, other than the book club, that's where we get the best English discussion going, where we choose a Japanese song and we try to figure out how to translate that Japanese into English together. We get to discuss why we would use certain words and phrases and not others. As a native speaker and English party host, I can then give recommendations as to what would sound better or what a native speaker might say rather than how a Japanese person might translate it. And that in itself becomes an English lesson where you are learning by using English. You are learning uh, new phrases and also how to even be more poetic with your English as we would if we were writing a song. Um, like it seems in the song event, there is no singing. We do not sing the song. We do listen to the song a time or two. Um, certainly, we listen to the song before we translate it, and we listen to it after. We recite the translation without singing, just to make sure we've got the, the words right. And uh, toward the end, we try to do a little live stream to give people a taste, a short taste of what happens at the song event. That we definitely recommend that you join. If you are able to get there, by all means, join in and enjoy. That's at the Nagatsuda Art Park in uh, um, the Midori Na uh, Art Park in Nagatsuda. Again, all of these events are available on Real English Party Online under the events page. You go to the events calendar, you, you select the event. When you scroll down, you will get a registration page. You put your name, your, your email, and how you would like to pay. And pretty much by submitting that, you have signed on your place for the event. And in many cases, you have secured and made sure that the event will happen at all. So by all means, I encourage you to do that. Don't be shy. Another thing that you can also do is you can come to the book club, right? We are having online book clubs three times a week. This time is a live stream intended for me to read a book, to model the English of reading a book in native pronunciation 
It's Tuesday afternoon when most people that would want to join might not be available. We understand that. So what we're basically doing is doing this as a live stream so that you can watch it either in real time or so that you can watch it as it is recorded on this event page. You can ask questions, you can leave comments, as I stated earlier. This is a, one of, the, of three book clubs. This one has probably the highest level of English novel. We're reading Clary Tale by Stephen King, but there are other books that we're reading. For example, tonight, our, in, uh, our book that we're reading is uh, otherwise known as Sheila the Great by Judy Bloom. And I have to tell you, that book is not low level, but it's, it's, it's meant to be read by children, with the main characters being children, so that the English is not so advanced that you couldn't understand it, uh, but it just advanced enough that you find the English and the vocabulary useful. You probably still encounter words that you haven't seen before or phrases that you didn't know of. And as you encounter those, I'll have the chance to explain those to you uh, based on your level. And uh, if, you, if you join that event, of course, that's a private event, 2,200 yen per event. You can join one day, not join the next day, jump in when you want, not jump in. This is no commitment. We're not asking you to buy tickets. We don't want you to make any commitments to the Real English Party other than a commitment to yourself that for some event or some other event, you would like to take part and see what it's like, right? And then if that event that the real, that, I'm sorry, the, the, the book is called, otherwise known as Sheila by Judy Bloom, if that book is a little bit too low level, if it's just a little bit too easy, we have a slightly higher level English book that we're reading, Dr. Doolittle, or The Voyages of Dr. Doolittle. I forget the name of the author, but he is not alive any longer, so I don't know if I'm necessarily obligated to say his name. But uh, that is a little bit higher and a little bit older English, more British sounding English. So you're going to get a lot more vocabulary there, but not necessarily the kind of that vocabulary that we use today. So it might make you, it might solve some curiosity that you have about some words and phrases. And in addition, it might give you some vocabulary and phrases that you can impress others with because it may not be words or phrases that they are even used to hearing or using. So that's useful to you. Okay, so that's some of the church announcements, as they would say, uh, for this for the Real English Party online. I feel like there's something else that I wanted to say. Oh, yes, we're going to be coming up with some more parties, like the karaoke party. I believe that will be coming up on, down the pipe so shortly. We'll be doing a Real English karaoke party, probably in Sagamiono, where we will then we will be singing certain songs. And... At that time, we will take requests, so you can register, and at the time of registration, we, we ask that you then tell us what song you would like to sing, what English song you would like to sing. And what we'll do for each of those English songs is we're going to practice the chorus of those songs. So we won't be able to master the, in, the lyrics of the entire song, but we can certainly practice the chorus of each song that you want to practice. We can practice them together. It shouldn't take more than two hours to do that and just enjoy the time. We can do that with additional food and treats, but that won't be included in the cost, right? So that's something else that we're working at, working on. We should be able to offer that by the end of March or the beginning of April. There are other events that we can do online as well. I've heard that someone was interested in an online drinking party like we had been doing during the pandemic. Of course, that's fun, although I just don't know how useful it is to be online and drinking in a room by yourself, talking to a screen. I know a few times I just ended up passed out in front of my screen, and that's not something I want to repeat. So what I would rather do is just really have something more going on that we would get together about, either something to discuss, some matter to read or, or to, to work on, uh, and, and that way we'll be focused on something that uses English in a way that is useful to you. 
and also I want you to be able to contribute. And if you are, if everyone's drinking and people, some people are talking more liberally than others, you might not, some people might not get the chance to say much while other people might be talking too much. So there's that kind of an issue, right? Uh, we have that to, do, to, to think about. But in any event, that is what it is. For now, we need to get to Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Now, as I said, I thought that we were beginning chapter 17. In fact, no, we are up to part seven in chapter 17, or was it 18? So hopefully we can finish this chapter by the end of this hour. Like I said, we either go to the end of the hour or when the chapter finishes. If the chapter finishes before the end of the hour, then that's how we that's how we finish it. That's how it goes, right? We stop right there. Even if it's not been a full hour, we'll stop there and we'll try to discuss as we do. Because there's no one here to discuss this with me, no one here asking questions, no one here to, uh, well, I guess basically make me teach something, I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. I'll start reading a little slowly at first, but then as I go on, I'm, it's going to get more and more native. I'm going to be looking for some words and phrases that I could teach you, but of course, without you asking questions, I won't be able to catch them all, and that's the trouble, right? That's why we need you to join, even if it's to join this free event online with your camera on or off. It's great to have you here to make that happen more fulfillingly for you. Uh, I you, Normally, in most of my events, we stop at the end of each page because I really do hope to get through these chapters since there's no one else here. I'll probably stop at the end of each section of the book. So now we are at part seven. We'll read the entire part until we get to part eight and then discuss. And so that's how this will go. If you do not know where we are in this book presently, then you can always go to a previous Real English Party. I think the last Real English Party uh, online Tuesday afternoon book club was on May, uh, February 13th. So if you click back into the archives of our events, you can go back to February 13th, click on that event, and you will be able to see the live stream as it is recorded there. And you can tell what happened at the last event or in the last section of the chapter. For now, let's just make sure that we understand where we are. Basically, our hero, Charlie, is meeting with Princess Leah's aunt, I believe. Right. She has he has already met Princess Leah, who was, of course, cursed among everyone else who's cursed. But she's cursed because she doesn't have a mouth. And she has Leah has sent her to his sent him to her uncle, Woody, who is cursed, cursed in that he can't hear. But not only can he not hear, but he doesn't have ears. And this was a curse placed on them by some evil entity that we don't know about yet. And now Woody has sent him to Claudia. Claudia is now, oh no, I'm sorry, Woody was cursed that he didn't have eyes. He could not see. He's been sent to Claudia, who has been cursed in that she cannot hear and she doesn't have ears. And for that reason, she speaks a bit strangely. I try to copy that way, that strange way of speaking when I can. But of course, I'm not such a good actor. Uh, hopefully getting better at it as we do this, but you never know. So now we are going to continue. Uh, let us begin with the remainder of the conversation that Charlie has with Claudia. Uh, Claudia has already told him how he can get to the, the carousel or the sundial that is to heal his dog radar, make him younger again. But he has to get past uh, this horrible creature. I believe the creature is known as Hannah. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure. Is it Hannah? Something like that. This horrible creature that protects people, stops people from getting into the town. So he's going to wait until a certain number of bells rings and Hannah goes to get her dinner and he's going to run into the town and put his dog on this carousel, make his dog younger. Then when a certain bell rings, 
oh no, he's going to run into a place and hide under a wagon of some short sort. And then when another bell rings the next morning, he's going to run back to Claudia's house. That's the plan. And so that's what they have talked about. And that leaves us where we are now. Part seven. So I shall start reading. Please listen in. Before I can ask any more questions, I had many. The wolves started in, a lot of them howling their heads off. I saw moonlight shining between two boards that had shrunk apart from each other. And there came a slam against the side of the house so hard that it made the whole thing shiver. Radar barked and got to her feet, ears up. There was another slam, then a third, then two together. A bottle fell off one of Claudia's shells, and I smelled pickled brine. I drew Mr. Bitch's gun, thinking, they'll huff and they'll, they will beat our house down. Not, nah, not, nah, nah, Claudia boomed. She looked almost amused. Follow me, Charlie, and see what angels thought. She pushed back the velvet curtain and motioned me through. The big room was not. Her bedroom wasn't. I wouldn't go so far as to call Claudia a slob about her private quarters, but you know what? Actually, I wouldn't go that far. Two quotes were leaping and thrown back, pants, Shirts and underwear that looked like cotton bloomers and shimmises were scattered across the floor. She kicked garments out of her way as she led to the far side of the room. I was less interested in what she meant to show me than I was in the wolf attack going on outside. And it was an attack, the battering at her flimsy wooden house now almost continuous. I was afraid that even if the clouds covered the moons, the assault wouldn't stop. They were cranked up and out for blood. He opened the door, revealing a closet-sized room featuring a composting to toilet that had certainly come from my world. Shit house, she said. In case you need it, don't worry. I sleep like a goddamn stone. I was sure of that, seeing as seeing that she was also as deaf as a stone. But I didn't think I'd be needing the bathroom if the wolves broke through. Not tonight, or ever. It sounded to me like dozens of them were out there trying to get in while Claudia gave me the house beautiful tour. Now, attention, Chris, Claudia said. She used the heel of her hand to slide back a panel next to the toilet. Inside was a car battery with AC Delco stamped on the side. Jumper clamps were attached to the cables. The cables were attached to some sort of power converter. Another cable came out of the converter and connected to what looked like an ordinary light switch. Claudia was grinning broadly. Adrian brought it. Oh no. Adrian brought it. And fucking wolves hit it. Howards bring presents, I thought. She flipped the switch. The result was hammering blasts of sound, like a bunch of car alarms magnified fifty or hundred times. I put my hands over my ears, afraid that if I didn't, I'd wind up as deaf as Claudia was. After 10 or 15 more seconds, she flipped us out the switch down. I took my hands cautiously away from my ears. In the big room, Rodan was barking like mad, but the wolves had stopped. Six speakers! Those fuckers will be into the woods like the temporary thunder. How do you like it, Charlie? Was it loud enough for you? I nodded and patted my ears. Nothing could withstand that sonic barrage for long. 
I only wish I could, I only wish I could hear it, Claudia said. But I feel it in my teeth. I still had the pad and pencil. I wrote on it and held it up. What happens when the battery dies? She considered this, then smiled and patted my cheek with one hand. I give you room and guard. You both a mother. Full train, young prince. I say yes. Okay. So what's happened here? It looks like now Charlie has finished taking his uh, instructions for how to heal Radar and accomplish his mission. But their discussion was interrupted by the fact that the wolves outside, what Charlie called the wolfies, were seeming to attack the house. And he was so scared about them attacking the house, he grabbed his gun and thought he would have to start shooting them with his rifle. But then Claudia says, no, no, you don't need to do that because she's got a special weapon. She takes him into her bedroom, which is very, very messy. Uh, and she exposes a, a sort of car battery, that battery with an AC Delco stamped on the side. That is a car battery. And attached to the car battery are jumper clamps. So now you may not know what jumper clamps are. In fact, jumper clamps are those little they're the cables that you attach to a battery, a car battery, to charge another car using its power. So usually the cable has these clamps on them, and you clamp them onto the nodes, the power nodes of the car battery. And then those clamps are attached to the cable that attaches to two more clamps, which attach to another battery. So one battery can charge the other battery using that cable. So jumper clamps can be used to transfer the energy from a battery anywhere. In this case, it transferred the energy to some sort of power converter, and then that went to a sort of light switch, and something turned on some sound, and it made this loud sound that would scare the wolves away. So the wolves run away from the house because of this loud, high pitch, pitch sound that happens. It said hammering blats of sound is what they were called. Hammering blats of sound. I don't know what a blat is. I think I may have heard the word before, but I've never really looked it up. Uh, but we can imagine the result was hammering blats of sound, like a bunch of car alarms magnified 60 or 100 times. Maybe blat is based on the kind of sound that it makes. <laughs> Right? So we might say blats of sound. He's probably using that word to emphasize the kind of sound it's making, like a car alar alarm. Now, if you hear a car alarm, it does make sort of a blam, blam, blam. So that's what, probably what he means by hammering blats of sound. And of course, those loud sounds scare the wolves away. And of course, he asks her, what, what will she do when the battery loses its charge? And so what she offers is an arrangement. Since she's helping him to help Radar, and she's giving him room and books, which means a place to stay and something to eat while he's there, she says it should be a fair trade if he, in return, brings her another fresh car battery for when her car battery loses its power. So there you have it. That's basically what's happened in this section. Not much more has happened. And uh, there's not much more in the way of vocabulary that I can think to teach to. So we're going to move on from there. Number eight. I slept by the stove. Oh, no, no, one more time, one more time. Wrong word. I slept by the stove as I had at Dora's. There was no lying awake and pondering my situation that night. Claudia gave me a pile of towels for a pillow, and I was out as soon as my head landed on them. Two seconds later, that's what it felt like. 
She was shaking me awake. She was wearing a long coat with butterflies appliqued on it. More of Dora's work. What? I said. Let me sleep. No, no, no. She was deaf, but she knew perfectly well what I was saying. Oh, Charlie, stand for her to go to the Time to be about your business. Besides, there's something I want to show you. I tried to lie back down, but she pulled me to a sitting position. Your dog's waiting. I've been up an hour or more. She's had another dose of liniment and feeling pokey. Look and see. Radar was standing beside her, wagging her tail. When she saw me looking, she nosed at my neck. Then, then licked my cheek. I got up. My legs were sore. My arms and shoulders worse. I rotated them. Then did a dozen fold shrugs, part of limbering up during preseason football practice. Go on and do your necessary. I'll have something warm for you after. I went into the little bathroom where she'd left me a basin of warm water and a knuckle of hard yellow soap. I urinated, then washed my face and hands. There was a small squirrel of milk on the wall, no bigger than a car's rear view mirror. It was scratched and tarnished, but when I bent, I could see myself. I straightened up, turned to go, then looked again more closely. I thought my big brown head looked a bit. Excuse me. Excuse me. I did that in summer after days in the sun. But there had been sunnier clouds. Except at night, of course. Then the clouds parted to let the moonlight shine through. I dismissed it as nothing but the light of the single oil lamp and the cloudy scrap of mirror. When I went back out, she handed me a thick slice of bread wrapped around a double helping of scrambled eggs. I worked it down. Not sure if that's a pun or not. She handed me my pack. I put it in water. I, I put it in water and cold tea, paper and pencil too, just in case. That cart you've been dragging stays here. I shook my head in pantomime, picking up the poles. Nah, nah, nah. You'll be until you return with my free water. I can take your tricycle? She had turned away and didn't hear. And I'm out, Charlie. Dawn breaks soon. You don't want to miss this. I followed her to the door, hoping she wouldn't be opening it to a pack of ravening wolves. There were none. And in the direction of what the boy had called the haunted city, the clouds had broken, and I could see a scatter of stars. Sitting near Kingdom Road was Claudia's oversized trike. The big basket on the back had been lined with a soft white square of what looked like fleece, and I understood that was where Radar was supposed to ride. I realized the three-wheeler would be easier and faster than pulling the cart with Radar in it. But there was something else that was even better. Claudia bent and held the lamp down to the oversized front wheel. And these tires, too. I'd heard of it, but never see it. Magic from you, Charlotte. Giant magic. That convinced me. Most had hard wheels clattering on cobbles. I pointed to the trike. I pointed to myself. I patted my chest above my heart. I'll bring it back, Claudia. I promise. You can tell me, tell me, young Prince Charlie. I've no doubt. He patted me on the back and then gave my bottom an unselfconscious whack that reminded me of Coach Harkness sending me into play. Defense on pinch hit or pinch hit. Now look to the bright sky. I did. 
As the stars paled, the sky over the city of Lillimar turned a beautiful peach shade. There was such a color when days dawn in the tropics, but I'd never seen on exactly one exactly like it. Radar sat between us, head raised, scenting the air. Except for the gunk coming, uh, coming out of her eyes and how thin she was, I would have thought her perfectly okay. What are you looking for? Claudia didn't reply because she didn't see me speak. She was looking toward the city, where the towers and three tall spires rose, black against the brightening day. I didn't like the look of those glassy spires, even at a distance. Their configuration made them seem like faces that were looking at us. I told myself that was an illusion, no different than seeing a gasping mouth in the knot hole of an old tree or a cloud that looked like a dragon, but it didn't work didn't come close to working. The idea, surely ridiculous, crept into my mind that the city itself was Gog Magog, sentient, watching, and evil. The idea of going any closer was frightening. The idea of using Rick's name to pass through its gates was terrifying. Mr. Bowditch did it and came back, I told myself. You can too. But I wondered. Then the bird sang out in one long, sonorous iron note. Rachel got to her feet and took a step toward the sound. First bell, Charlie. So one more time. First bell, Charlie. I raised one finger and nodded. While the sound still lingered, something began to happen that was far more amazing than an oversized cockroach or a big red cricket. The sky over the cram, crammed, what? The sky over the crammed together hobbles of cottages outside the city began to darken as if a shade were being rolled, not down, but up. I grabbed Claudia's arm. For a moment afraid I was seeing some strange eclipse, not of the sun or moon, but of the earth itself. Then, as the sound of the bell faded to nothing, the darkness broke apart in 10,000 cracks of daylight that pulsated and changed. I saw the colors, black and gold, white and orange, deepest royal purple. They were monarch butterflies, each one the size of a sparrow, but so delicate and ephemeral that the morning light shone through them as well as around them. Claudia cried and raised both hands to the rising flood of life above us. That flood blocked the city skyline, blocked out the faces I thought I'd seen. <laughs> Loud as she was, I hardly heard. I was transfixed. Never in my life had I seen something so weirdly surreal and so beautiful. The butterflies darkened the sky as they flew above us, traveling to God knew where. And as I felt the wind of their wings, I finally accepted wholly and completely the reality of this other world of impis. I had come from a make-believe world. This was reality. Mm. Okay, okay. That was a, that was some of Stephen King's famous scenes. Sorry for clapping in your ear like that, but I just love reading Stephen King. Sometimes, most of the time, his English is fairly simple stuff, but sometimes he he really narrates a story in a way that gets me really excited. And that last, the way that he finished that passage was just perfect. That was classic Stephen King, the way that he wrote that. But now there's lots of words here that you may not have known or understood. I'm not going to go into all of them with you. However, there were some words that I thought that would be useful to, to know. I mean, words like tarnished, 
you might already know. Maybe we've gone over that already. He said, he said the mirror was scratched and tarnished. Scratched, of course, means to be damaged by some hard surface scraping against it. And then tarnished, in this case, means dirty or discolored in some way, right? That's what tarnished means. But then as we went on, what basically what's happened is he's gone to the toilet, he's urinated, he's taken a look at himself in the mirror, which is scratched and tarnished, tarnished. And this is something that may come back later, but he's noticed that his hair is getting lighter, right? Now, Charlie has dark hair. Now, dark-haired white people, usually their hair does get light, lighter when it's exposed to the sun for a long time. That's called bleaching, when their hair starts to get little sort of blonde highlights, or it gets just a little bit lighter brown because of exposure to the sun for so long. But he hasn't been out in any intense sunlight. Of course, Empress is almost always cloudy, and it's only clear at night. So he's not quite sure why his hair seems to be getting lighter, but it does seem to be getting lighter. And I'm sure that will come up again later. But in this moment, it says he thought nothing of it. Even though he has dark brown hair, he thought maybe it's just the lighting in the room and just the tarnished mirror. That's the reason why. So he says, I dismissed it as nothing but the light of the single oil lamp and the cloudy scrap of mirror. So he's basically saying maybe the light and the mirror is just making his hair look that way. And so he dismissed it, which means that he didn't think any more about it. He didn't care. He decided not to think about it anymore. He decided it's not important. He dismissed it. I'm sure that will come up earlier. It looks like Charlie is undergoing some kind of transformation. That along with the fact that he can't say any kind of slang from his own from his own world, right? So he seems, and sometimes he seems to speak in another way, as if an, as a as if like a character in this world. So maybe he is slowly being transformed into a character of Impis, a native of Impis in some way. We really don't know. Perhaps even into a prince, but we'll soon see. So he gets some food. He 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 gets some supplies for his travels. Of He's being told that, that he should take the tricycle. He should take uh, Claudia's tricycle, or what also can be called a trike. So if you see it called tricycle in one sentence, and then you also see the word trike in another sentence, you just want to bear in mind that those actually are the same words. Trike is just a short way of saying tricycle, right? And of course, she refers it to it not as a trike or a tricycle, but she refers to her vehicle as a three-wheeler. Either way, this, this vehicle will make it much easier for Charlie to travel. He will be able to put radar on the vehicle and he does not have to pull it. It can, it can, propulse itself. It can move itself like a bicycle or a tricycle would. And one interesting thing about this tricycle is this tricycle, unlike all the other vehicles in this town that doesn't seem to have modern technology, it has rubber wheels, tires. Apparently the tires were brought by Aid or Ad, I think his name was, or Mr. Bowditch, basically, who had brought tower tires, which would make it easier for him to roll. So Mr. Bowditch has brought many things from his world to help Claudia and Woody and, and Layla and Leia. Uh, one of those things in this case is now some tires so that not only will the tri tricycle roll more smoothly, but it will roll quietly, which will make it easier for him to sneak past Hana or sneak into the town. Of course, then uh, I want to get into where the bell rings, right? He says, then the bell rang out. It's one long sonorous iron note, right? So sonorous, that is a word you likely have never seen before, but that's a perfect word that you should guess. In this case, then the bell rang out its one long sonorous iron note. Dong. 
right? So what does it mean for a word, for a bell to be, for a note to be sonorous, right? We would think that, right? It must have something to do with sound, right? Maybe very loud, right? Right? Maybe it's echoing a lot, right? In fact, we can see in the word sonorous, there is the word sonar or sonar, which actually we really use for the, a sound that goes out and echoes back so we can locate objects around us, right? So sonorous might be in a way that a way that echoes or reverberates and seems to vibrate around you. Maybe that's what sonorous means. We don't have to look it up to see. We can just guess as we go. But later on, maybe we might want to check and see what the dictionary says. And it says, of a person's voice or other sound imposing, imposingly deep and full, right? So that's it, right? It's basically a sound that kind of sort of fills the space, right? I try to read with a sonorous voice, but of course, I just don't have one. But this bell is very sonorous. It's very deep and full. It fills the whole room. It echoes throughout the whole space. So that's what he meant by sonorous. There are a few words like that where we would really need to just guess the meaning of the words as he described them. I think another one of those words might be as we get to the last part of the chapter. He says, they were monarch butterflies. Here we are, right? They were monarch butterflies, each one of the size of a sparrow, but so delicate and ephemeral ephemeral. That's another word that I have seen before, but I never could tell what it meant. I never looked it up. I just guessed what it meant. And I've always assumed by ephemeral, maybe, and especially since it says that the morning light shone through them as well as around them, maybe ephemeral means like almost not real or almost like it's only partly real. Like so, if you, if you, if the morning light shone through them, that means you can see through them. So it's almost like not fully physical, like almost like a gas. We actually use the word ethereal to talk about this super material world that's not physical, but ephemeral might be by, like that. Something that you can't quite touch, but you can just see a little bit, right? That's what we might guess, but we don't know. We keep reading and guess. Another chance we might have to look it up and find out that if from all means lasting for a very long time, <laughs> right? So that's actually completely different from what I thought, but I think I can understand what that means in this case. Ephemeral means something that will stay there forever, lasting for a long time. This is having nothing to do with unreal in any way, but that's what, you know, that's what I would have guessed. I would have guessed wrong in this case, and I guess I always have guessed wrong as I read this. But that's important to see. It's important for you to see that even native speakers don't know the meaning of words, and we guess. And if, even if we guess wrong, it's okay. It doesn't really change so much of our understanding of the story. But now we know ephemeral now means something that will last a long time, maybe something permanent, delicate and permanent. Sounds strange to put that combination together, but hmm, okay, so it is, right? And then he said something else. Oh yeah, loud as she was, I hardly heard I was transfixed, right? I think we already, discussed this word before, but just in case we haven't, transfixed is to be, I understand it to mean that you, it's as if your attention is being held in place and you cannot turn your attention away. You can't help but to pay attention to something as if something is holding you there and fixing your position so that you can't move, transfixed. When there's something that's so amazing that you can't look away, we might say that you are transfixed, right? You just can't turn away. You can't move. You can't leave that situation. You are fixed. You are 
fixed by something seemingly above normal. You are transfixed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, of course, never in my life has, had I seen something so weirdly surreal. All right, and in that one, I know it, that's kind of what I felt ephemeral was, but we know surreal, sur means under, right? Or just over, but not too high above, right? And real means obviously real. So just under real means almost real or not quite real, right? That's what surreal, we can guess what that means, almost real or not quite real. So you could, Think of it as like almost like a dream where you, it, you could be convinced that it's real, but there are certain things about it that make it seem more like an, an imaginary thing or something that you've dreamed up in a fantasy, right? That's something that's surreal. Mm -hmm. And so those are the kind of words that we definitely need explained as we go. So if you were to ask questions about them, then I would answer them. We would talk about them. And even if I'm wrong about them, we get the chance to talk about them and discuss them more in the story. So basically what's happened in this situation, the, the bell has rung out in its sonorous iron, its sonorous iron tone. And at the, as a result of that, the, the sky is completely overshadowed with monarch butterflies. Those are those very popular brown and black butterflies or gold and black butterflies with a beautiful pattern on them that there's so many of them that it overshadows them. It's almost like the world was being eclipsed is what is how he defined it. And so then we know that yeah, I'm not sure what it means, but we, to see such a sight of so many monarch fl butterflies flying across the sky that actually you can't even see the sky except through and around the monarch butterflies. Uh, I guess that is where he began to realize. And that's where he says, and I just want to read this again because it's so beautiful. He says, the butterflies darkened the sky as they flew above. Traveling to God knew, God knew where, which means I, we have no idea. I have no idea. Only God knows. God knew where. And as I felt the wings, feel the wind of their wings so fast, so many, that their wind, the wings, you could feel the wind. I finally accepted, wholly and completely, the reality of this world, of impis. I had come from a make-believe world. This was reality. So that's an amazing statement that he's making now. Now he is transformed to this world now that he feels like this is the, re the real world. And where he came from, that was the dream. That was the fantasy world. So we can see as things begin to happen to him in this world, He's beginning to become a part of this world and the world is becoming a part of his reality. And now the world that he left behind, well, it's becoming less and less real to him. This is now his reality. This was reality. Great way to finish the chapter. Honestly, I must say that was a great way to finish the chapter. Very well written last passage there. And so then, I will be advertising again that we are starting a new chapter for the next event. The next chapter will be chapter 17. So this was chapter 16. Next is chapter 17. A night in the storage shed. The gate. And the haunted city. All right, so yeah, this is really getting into the thick of the uh, of the adventure here, right? We are almost, or just about, almost at the halfway point of the story, yeah. But really, the plot has kicked in. We know what the plot is, but now he's going to undergo the challenge, and we're going to see if he succeeds or if he fails. That will happen in the next 
Real English Party Online Tuesday Afternoon Book Club Live. So I look forward to seeing you then. As I said, you definitely want to take time to enjoy the real English party of life. There is a whole English speaking world out there that you can be a part of. There are worlds that we might imagine. There are worlds that are much more than the one you live in in the English speaking community. We want you to join that English speaking community. Not to leave your native language behind, but to fully embrace being an English speaker by using it, by reading it, by speaking it, by listening to it, by talking with people who are doing the same and making yourself, making a world for yourself where you do speak English and not just the world where you study English and dream of one day speaking English. We want you to be like Charlie. Go to a new world where you have new skills and abilities and make that world your own. And I think that's a good way to, place to stop. In the meantime, I will wish you all the best. I hope that you do enjoy your time from now until the next. Until then, I will say have a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.